Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị. Hôm nay thứ Sáu, 2 tháng 8, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, John Povan là một nhân vật gây tranh luận sôi nổi trong cả nội bộ quân sự lẫn dân sự của hai phe Mỹ và Việt Nam. Ông là một trong những người đặc biệt, nếu không muốn nói là người đặc biệt nhất trong cả hai giới dân sự và quân sự. Trong giới quân sự Việt Nam thì ông Ven đã gây nhiều tai tiếng khi là cố vấn cho tướng Huỳnh Văn Cao và đã to tiếng với tướng Lý Tòng Bá trong trận ấp Bắc. Một trong những trận đầu tiên giới truyền thông Mỹ đăng tải rộng rãi về sự thiếu kỷ luật và thiếu tinh thần chiến đấu của binh lính Việt Nam Cộng Hòa dưới thời đệ nhất Cộng Hòa. Trong quân đội Mỹ thì ông Ven đã tỏ ra khinh miệt, bất cần giấu giếm tướng Paul Hawking, vị chỉ huy cao cấp nhất của Bộ Tư lệnh Viện trợ Quân sự Việt Nam, bị triệu hồi về Mỹ vì bướng bỉnh. Ông Ven lại được đưa trở lại Việt Nam như một nhân viên dân sự ở cấp tướng và được cử làm cố vấn cho tướng Ngô Du. Ông Ven bị tử nạn khi trực thăng rơi ở Compton. Ông Frank Scotton đã tiếp xúc và làm việc với John Paul Ven. Ông Ven đã yêu cầu phòng thông tin đưa Frank Scotton về làm việc với ông nhưng yêu cầu đó đã bị từ chối. Trong phần phản vấn này, thì Minh Thúy mời quý vị theo dõi tiếp xúc của ông Frank Scotton và những suy nghĩ của ông về con người và cách làm việc của Trung tá John Paul Van trong cuộc chiến Việt Nam qua phần 10 phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Just the operational guy. Yeah, that that, that, that right. makes it happen. Yeah, that, yeah, the operational aspect of it. How, how close did you work with Van? Is it just... Van? Yes. Well, um, I never really worked for him. Um, but uh, when, when I first met him in, early in... in uh, early in 63, and he was complaining that um, the Seventh Division didn't really know what was going on, even across the river from uh, Mita. Uh, I went over one night and uh, spent a day and a night, kind of around that ferry landing area, uh, and I did see some communist presence um, from which I I hid cleverly. Um, and uh, you know, I, I told him that he, it was an evolving country and situation and he just had to be patient and find the ones that would be uh, good to work with and that there were some of those like that. Um, his personality, I think, made it difficult for a lot of uh, Vietnamese and a lot of Americans because he he was uh, he was sometimes a bit shrill. Um, he was argumentative. Uh, he wanted you to see see his point of view and accept his point of view immediately, and uh, that made it difficult. But but the, but alternatively, as a point of consideration, there were a lot of American advisors that didn't give a shit. You know, they were just filling a. A, a box on an organizational chart, uh, but, but but Van cared and Van was going to get out and he was going to try to get things done. Um, so I think in many respects you 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 might not be in complete accord with someone, but if you can see that they were trying to get things done, then you you could uh, you could work with them. Uh, again, my my brother Frank Snep may have something to say about George Jacobson, who we think of, we call sometimes Jake, uh, or or Sam Wilson of of uh, Merrill's Marauders fame in World War II. Um, you know, I didn't. Uh, I had some differences of opinion with George Jacobson, uh, but on those things that we could reach agreement. Um, then he was worth spending some time with. 
I don't want to delve into this, but you know, the bright shining light, Neil Sheehan's so-called the magnum opus about John Paul Vian. Yeah. How, how, tr how much of the truth in there do you think it is? Well, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of truth to it. I know after it came out, uh, Neil Sheehan, uh, who who's, I think is also a likable guy, Neil Sheehan, uh, uh, spoke with me and asked me what I thought of the book, and I said, you know, uh, uh, it, overall, I really like the book, but he went into uh, he went into some uh, detailed discussion of John Van's family background, and uh, said some things about John Van's mother that I thought were just com completely unnecessary. Um, but other than other than that, I thought that. Uh, I thought that bright, bright shining lie is worth worth a read. Um, if you compare uh, that book with uh, Frankie Fitzgerald's Fire in the Lake, and you've you've only got room in your rucksack for one book to bring on a field trip, I'd say uh, bring Neil Sheehan's book. What do you think about the Second Republic with the President Nguyen Van Thiel? Oh, I, th I think I mentioned in my book that at one point, uh, Ev Baumgartner, who always liked to use me as kind of his uh, bird dog, you know, to point, he said he wanted me to go down to Kanto and uh, meet, uh, pres uh, well, then Corps Commander Thiel. And uh, so I said to Ev, I said, yeah, but I heard he's kind of a lightweight, that he's, you know, he's, he's not doing very much. And uh, Ev said, well, lightweight might be good because <laughs> might he not then rise to the top? <laughs> well, so I went down and I, I did meet him, the only time I met him in my life. And uh, uh, he, he was, I thought, presented a fairly austere, non-committal uh, appearance. Uh, he seemed to have a an understanding of what was at work uh, and in places not at work in four core. Um, and I th my, my sense is that given the environment, the time, the other personalities within which he had to work, um, he, he, he did fairly well. Hmm. But uh, you know, and you know, go back to if if the American government had adopted um, the Lao uh, barrier uh, effort that I very much on the margins insignificantly advocated with one person in the cabinet to no avail, um, then. The Republic of Vietnam would have had time. That's what we need to mature. Yeah, time. every country needs time, and uh, that's what would have, that's what would have been needed. Well, oh, I, I know I know that you're also in touch with the uh, so-called civilian side, uh, rather than the military, uh, like you know President Thiel. Uh, do you think there's a possibility that we could have uh, could have had a civilian leader instead of the military? I think One it, like Thiel. Was that possible? Well, I, th I, th I, th I think that it may have been eventually uh, possible. Um, I think that Vice President Hung was aged in every way physically at the time, but I applaud what he tried to initiate in terms of the anti-corruption campaign. Mm. It was really great. Um, I think that uh, uh, Rector Baum of the uh, Institute of Administration, uh, Jacqueline Baum's uh, husband at the time, uh, was a very perceptive, clean, living, um, uh, highly qualified person. Um, uh, if he had received an appointment that might have led later to an elected position 
uh, you know, all kinds of things could have happened. But the key was uh, providing an opportunity for the South to be isolated from the North. And uh, we, we weren't doing that. And instead of doing what I felt, if we were going to do anything at all militarily, and that's, that's the first choice you make, I are we going to intervene militarily? Mm -hmm. And then the second one should be, uh, to, to what end, to what goal? And then the third question should be, how? How to do it? You know, uh, well, we, we, we didn't ad address the third question successfully. I think in the, see, in the jaws of history, for example, Museum was saying that Phan Hi Quat could have been the prime minister and the country would have had it in another direction had he been elected. Uh, what do you think of that? Is, is he uh, innocent? I mean, is he ignorant of the thing or is he just saying for the sake of, uh, you know, uh, presenting a democratic face to the South Vietnam? Or was that a viable option at all? I, I don't think that, uh, I mean, uh, you know, with, with respect to everything that th those gentlemen had coped with in the 1930s and 1940s, I think that they just weren't up to the task of the 1960s and 1970s. Okay. I think that uh, you know a new, a new era, a new new leadership was okay. was required, and uh, uh, we we didn't. We were unable to create the conditions within which they might have thrived. Well, nobody knew what it's like. Nobody's prepared for the future enough. Nobody's seen enough, far enough into the future to make that kind of preparation that you are referring to. Yeah, well, in any country, in any set of national circumstances, it's difficult. Look at, uh, look at America today. Mời quý vị đón xem phần 11 phỏng vấn ông Frank Scotton, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu ngày 9 tháng 8, 2024. Kính thưa quý vị, chương trình VATV đến đây xin tạm ngưng. Chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục phần 2 sau phần thông báo và quảng cáo.